Seminar number three, scholarship defined. An expert is a man who has made all the mistakes which can be made in a narrow field. Some will undoubtedly remember Niels Bohr was a Danish physicist and winner of the Nobel Prize in 1922 for his contributions to our understanding of the atomic structure. We are really lucky to be living in an age when definitions have expanded and evolved, and the definition of scholarship has certainly evolved in the last 10 to 15 years. This is good news for academic physicians who are not primarily hardcore researchers in the traditional sense, the way Niels Bohr was a researcher. Before moving forward with our program on study design, it is important to learn how the effort we put into our studies fits into the larger context of scholarship in the world. This excerpt comes from a report issued by Ernest Boyer on the terrific collaborative work he initiated at the Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Learning in the 1990s. The time has come to go beyond the tired old teaching versus research debate or service versus research debate and give to scholarship a broader, more efficacious meaning. A new paradigm of scholarship was proposed where four different types of scholarship were defined to recognize and reward the talent and valuable work of all those working in academia. The scholarship of discovery, scholarship of integration, scholarship of application, and the scholarship of teaching. So let's review the definitions of Boyer's four new forms of scholarship. The scholarship of discovery. Discovery, historically called research, is at the very heart of academic life. This is the type of scholarship that is most recognizable to people. Discovery involves being the first to find out, to know, or to reveal original theories, principles, knowledge, or creations. Discovery is only the beginning and not the end. The scholarship of integration. If discovery is to move beyond information to knowledge and then to understanding, transdisciplinary connections must be made. Integration allows isolated information to become meaningful in a larger context. Integration creates new knowledge, new insights, and new understanding. The scholarship of application. Knowledge must be applied to be useful. Application of knowledge relates the theory of discovery to the realities of life. Application links the bench to the bedside, also known as knowledge translation. And the scholarship of teaching. Knowledge is useful if transmitted, transformed, and extended by teaching. Scholarship is a communal act that takes on meaning only when conveyed and shared. Teaching in all its forms, oral and written, should be affirmed to keep the flame of all forms of scholarship alive. All of us have some experience doing good work in each of these areas, and according to Boyer's model, that work actually qualifies as scholarship worthy of recognition. For example, implementing a clinical protocol and assessing the impact of that protocol qualifies as the scholarship of application. Studying the effect of a curriculum innovation in learners qualifies as the scholarship of teaching. When offered any opportunity in the future, always consider how that opportunity fulfills the criteria for one of those four types of scholarship before saying yes. The scientific method classically applied to the scholarship of discovery is applicable to all other forms of scholarship. We'll talk more about the scientific method in upcoming seminars. For now, I think we should consider using the term scholarship for all of our extra-clinical endeavors because it is a much better term than research for all the work we do. And it is important to remember that all forms of scholarship can be assessed in a systematic and objective manner, and we'll talk more about that in future seminars. Most learners will have heard about the triple threat in medicine, one who excels at clinical work, teaching, and research. Sir William Osler is one of the most recognizable historical examples of the triple threat, and we've all met some folks during our training who qualify for that designation. But many now say that becoming a triple threat is nearly impossible in today's complex world because of all the competing interests for our time. I think the term triple threat is really outdated, and with our new understanding of scholarship from Boyer, I propose we instead think about what it takes to become a complete scholar. The complete scholar discovers new knowledge, synthesizes new knowledge through integration of prior knowledge, applies new knowledge to the solution of old problems, and teaches new knowledge to others. 
Becoming a complete scholar is definitely achievable, and if you look around, many in our group embody that definition whether they realize it or not. By the end of these seminars, it will be evident how you can harness your talent and imagination to become a complete scholar. In the next seminar, we'll talk about developing a question worthy of study.